what's going on here? Tenakoto everybody. How's everyone doing out there? Kote Kahoroa ho. It was actually supposed to be named something different. Oops, I better change that. <coughs> Just bear with me very quickly. Hello, um, as I say, ko te kahoroa hau, my name is te kahoroa, um, my full name is Corey Neil te kahoroa bond, um, Corey was given to me by my parents, Neil is my father's name, and te kahoroa was given to me by my great, -grandpa great grandparents um, on my arrival onto this planet. I needed to make note of that, because... <coughs> I've been wondering what to do for my first podcast. Um, I mean, I could have done um, a video of the origin stories of Haka the Beehive and um, how I came to that um, decision to use that as my waka. But I thought because of the tohu that have arrived to me this week um, I thought this might be the best way basically so that uh, you can see how I operate um, because it can't really be described uh, in any other kind of way because it's so strange to me and um, surely strange to others about how I come across things. Um, I'm trying to describe it in any other way than following the Wairua path, but um, I, I guess you can't. So um, I'd like to take you on a bit of a journey <coughs> um, today in regards to I guess um, how do I put this without stepping on too many toes? The mana munching of my ancestors? Um, or if it was even um, meant to be that way? Or, or what? But basically this is a story of me listening to my ancestors and trying to fight for what's right um, for their sake and for the corridor's sake, for the future of, um, of here. Don't ask me why um, this stuff has come to me. Don't ask me why um, every little step has uh, kind of taken me in towards this journey and, um, and these knowledges. But I'll start off with what happened with me yesterday. Yesterday I started off the day, like every other day, by taking my dog for a walk. <coughs> uh, but yesterday I wanted to go to the lake, so I drove past the old warehouse in um, Kaitaia. On a Rimu tree along that road was some, at, at the moment in um, the far north, the district council were going for uh, voting. So there's, um, you know, voting signs all over the place. One of these signs happened to be screwed in to a tree, a Rimu tree outside uh, the warehouse. Now, you could probably argue, yeah, the tree's dead, so go hard. Or you could argue, how many times has this tree been, had someone screw this shit into it so it is dead? basically. Um, I don't know, I'll go and have a look again. But in honesty, it's still a drastic um, disregard to life in general, to put your fucking face on a living being. Now this wasn't the only one, and I, and I, and I hit the other people up, um, up in Awanui about doing it on their palm trees 
um, which were living trees. Um, that's a whole other story. But today I want to get on to whose face it was that I ripped off that Rimu tree outside the warehouse, the old warehouse building in Kaitaia. Great song, by the way, here, Fun. I'm not going to play it, but Shefu has been a, a big influence in my life, I just want to point out. But this is the guy who, um, whose face was on the tree yesterday, Mr. Penetoi Kleskovic. Penetoi is a very prestigious name in history. It's a, I'd suggest to go and read up about that figure from the times of the treaty. <coughs> Kleskovic is a Dalmatian name that's come to the far north. The far north is full of Dalmatians, or as the Māori called them, the Tarara, because of the way they talked. They went da 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 da, -da all the time. But this man here decided to confront me for pulling down his signs. It went like this. Actually, I'll bring it up on my phone so, it's, so the verbatim is correct. Hopefully it's still there because I blocked them. That's right. He um he tried he friended me first on Facebook and I asked him what's up, bro? And he said, Who told you to take my signs down? I said, Atua and what? I took one down because it was on a tree. He said, Don't touch my signs ever again. And I said, I'll do what I want. What are you going to do, councillor man? To which he replied, I won't tell you again, champion. Ka kite. And I said, don't put them on a tree again. So I did a bit of research on him. I didn't even realise it was Shane Jones's son. And I wonder why he doesn't use his father's last name, or if his father's last name is actually Kleskovich, and Shane Jones likes to use another name to, I don't know, make him more uh, politically friendly. I'm not 100% on that. But what I am 100% on is um, their connection to a company called Kahoro Enterprises. This is my name. And this company was started just before COVID, 14th of October, 2019. Not 100% what it is because it's a consultant service. And if anyone knows anything about um, Maldives and their consultant services, fuck, they get paid a lot of money for doing sweet fuck all, basically. Um... I've seen some of these uh, bills that um, completely unqualified people can uh, ask for from these trust uh, funding bodies, and it's fucking ridiculous, to be honest, the amount of money that these, these people think they should be getting paid um, for, for doing sweet fuck all, basically. And... Um, so these businesses, there's heaps of them out there, these business consultant services, because basically these are how Māori elites charge um, funding bodies such as iwis, um, uh, iwi governance trusts, basically anything to do with Māori governance, this is how a Māori individual um, creates an invoice to invoice those companies, those corporate uh, entities, iwis and such. So there's, there's thousands of these, and they're, in my opinion, most likely um, fraudulent. But was that defamation? I'll take that back. But there are plenty of them out there that appear to be fraudulent. 
I'm not pointing fingers at this one at this time because I don't have the information regarding it. And I hope that anybody out there who does uh, that the story gets um, you get interested in it would help me to um, to figure out what these guys are up to because it's all about conflicts of interest. Day. Eh? Um, now this company is the parent company of a company called Tupu Nursery Limited which is all um, nursery wholesale stock. So I'm wondering, I, can't f I, I haven't been to this nursery, I haven't called them, I don't know what their, um, their main uh, nursery stock is. It's most likely a mixture of pine trees and natives. And I'm guessing they have um, corporate contracts with councils to plant these trees to do with um, Shane Jones's uh, Million Trees thing. And it's all very interesting that his son uh, happens to be um, involved with um, nursery stocks. Um, oh, interestingly, there's no managing director listed here. Only Kahoro Enterprises. Actually, I'm just going to do a quick Google with that. You guys might freak out that I'm using Bing at the moment. I've never used it before, so I'm using it. Let's see how it goes. Um, well, it would seem that there's actually no nursery there. Unless it's this one. I mean, does this even exist? Sorry to detract here, guys, but you know, when your mind goes, hmm, I'll just uh, have a look at this at the time. It's very slow today. I must be stepping on the wrong toes today. Or the right toes, sorry. Jeepers. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? It's called Tupu Nurseries, but called BDO here. So there's another connection there. Um, BDO. I'll probably do some uh, research on on that later, uh, or now. Sorry if it's boring, Farno. Accountants. BDO Nursery. What? What the hell? What do you mean, Google? Why are you from the Lego? I have no idea what this BDO is. All I've got is powerful digital hubs and stuff like that. So if anybody's in Kerry Kerry, can anybody find out what that building actually is? Basically, because it's not a it's not a nursery, is it? Hmm. Anyway, continuing on. Tupu nursery. Uh, there's also a um, a co-papa started by Tararawa in connection with um, the iwi governance structure that I was working with called Tehiku Iwi Development Trust that only lasted six weeks there. 
Uh, all of a lot of people were calling me a coup popper, but I really only went in there to figure out what the fuck was going on in these fucking places. Um, anyway, the the Tupu program was something that uh, was to have twenty students of the far north get horticulture degrees, and it cost like two million for twenty people to get a uh, um, horticulture thing. What I'm pointing at is how stupidly expensive Māori iwi, dealings with Māori iwi and stuff are. It's ridiculous. And who's paying for it? The taxpayer. Well, in conjunction with uh, assets, commercial assets of iwi and stuff as well. Iwi do pay for um, parts of it, but a lot of it, I'm, I'm pretty sure most of it, most Kaupapa, you know, um, ventures and that would be coming from uh, funding from government agencies such as TPK. Um, and then we move on to Kahoroa Enterprises on to this one. Now, I actually came across this a few months ago um, and I kind of kind of um, didn't really know what to make of it at the time um, and all I could really figure out was what are you up to Hone Harawira using this name basically and um, here it is here uh, Hone Harawira's connection it's the Ant Trust now that means Opodi Naitakato Te Rarawa Trust and it's just another governance structure gaining funding left right and center from the taxpayer to do fucking shit like this man this is ridiculous so this facebook page hasn't been around for that long um i just pulled up this first picture here um because this is the rhetoric that started this takaharoa initiative through the ant trust and we can just read it here. Takahoroa is a new initiative which provides youth engagement through digital platforms to increase overall well-being by creating a peer support forum and delivery of other community-based activities. This, ini this initiative will be driven by Toyohe and peer men mentored to youth in Mairi 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 Whenua. <coughs> this is the most bullshit trust rhetoric fucking bullshit doublespeak that I've seen permeate through this country. This is this is how the crown, crown infiltrates. Sorry, my dog's bored and keeps on chewing stuff. So if I tell him off while I'm here, I'm sorry. I'm going to go play with him after this. Come here, doggy. Come on. Come here. <coughs> And, um, you know, I, I only came across this sort of speak during um, my time working at uh, this, this iwi governance structure thing. Um, very similar to the Ant Trust, Tehiku Iwi Development Trust um, that I worked with. They represented uh, four out of the five iwi up here. And it was all signed with John Key back in 2013. I mean, the history and, and legislation and bullshit that all goes on with iwis and stuff like that is just next level fucked like I'm surprised nobody's really talking about it because this the, the amount of time and money that is wasted on people reading bullshit like this is fucked now, I'll tell you why it's bullshit so if we just go to their Facebook page and now I, I'm guessing because I can't find any apps or any other um, uh, platform, you know, where they're discussing what digital platforms they're going to be using. I'm pretty sure all they did was start a Facebook page. And on this Facebook page is basically um, a whole lot of nothing, really. Um, there's a few stories of the community. But I've been living in Kaitai now for the last six years, and I've seen various Māori groups doing the same stories of community. Look how bad my internet is at the moment. Um, 
you know, th these same fellas have all been on the same sort of videos over and over again on various other platforms. Now, all they're doing, and as stated here, oh, and the next next one here is they're going to be enticing the community into engaging via prize packs basically now I've been scanning a lot of these prize packs some of them are amazing some of them are wicked like kayaks like over two thousand three thousand dollars worth of prizes most likely every month and I you know they're only getting three likes four five six likes you know on their page so who's getting the prizes on every single one of the prize um, posts we've got people asking who won so are people just pocketing the prizes that that is being funded for or what anyway I've reached out to these people and I've said um, sort it out I, because you're using my name I've got qu I've got questions and you should answer them basically um, they've seen my message and there's been no response yet I would expect with what I said to them that um, anyone with any mana with using this name would challenge me back on on my challenge to their mana um, so this is very interesting that I can actually use my name directly challenge them with my tupuna behind me and figure out why they're using my name now in uh, newspaper articles and that about Te Kaharoa and why they use that name is because of a net that was used when the Kurahopo sunk in the whirlpool of the Kermadex Aroha mai, I forgot the Māori names to them and the Aotearoa came and patched it up with this net the hole in the Kurahopo and the name of that net is called Kaharoa or long strength basically now that's just Kaharoa it's not Te Kaharoa and that's where they need to figure out the difference because I'll put it like this what's Opodi? well it's just it's just you know sad smoke isn't it it's got nothing to do with anything really but you put the te opodi in front of it and it creates the whole iwi thus as they describe kahoroa as a metaphor and I'm saying to them that te kahoroa is very real there is no metaphor in it te kahoroa is me and my ancestors so I advise them to remove the te in front of their name of this f dead entity basically so um, moving forward because I'm not going to actually get into the whakapapa of that name because it's a what I will say about the name is that it's been able to stay off paper it's m very hard to research and if you know anything about names um, and the words used within this name um, well I'll make you I'll let you make your own mind up about it basically um, I know what it means and um, I'll let you figure that out for yourselves now moving forward what else is using my name and I'm <coughs> fairly certain that it would be the same groups using this name as using it from that uh, Fokaro of the Korahopo sinking in the Aotea uh, fixing it. Now what's very very auspicious about that corridor is like here's the north using that corridor when the name Takahoroa I was named after my great grandfather who's from Wanganui of the Aotea Waka now, do you see what's going on there again? The Aotearoa uplifting 
to put a hope for all over again. Anyway, uh, very interesting um, coincidences, but nothing's really coincidence at the end of the day, eh? Um, <coughs> what is this te kahaoroa? I haven't done too much research on it yet. Um, I've just logged in and registered yesterday. But I've kind of known about this for a little while, but kind of couldn't wrap my head around what it was until the corridor has been permeating about uh, the Republic and the name change of New Zealand. I think this is the direct UN think tank. I think this is the direct uh, platform that elite Pākehā have been writing um, cultural reports and historic reports and submitting them on this website which is governed by the AUT and if I just do a quick search here just Māori brings up these just look at these names but one guy who did jump out to me is this guy Mr. Paul Moon and uh, I'm just going to close these quickly and um, here's Paul Moon here now here's a white guy telling us what the deal is eh like again and what we're fucking 200 years down the track now whanau and here's the same bullshit he's the same white guy telling us what it is now if the platform has any issue with me using this corridor um, that's fine um, Heidi my te corridor because I have an issue with you perpetrating lies basically um, I hope this plays it's not playing is it no go and watch it anyway this one here P P Professor Paul Moon on the origins of the name Aotearoa and as I say, I'm fairly certain that this is the think tank. This is what is trying to um, rewrite the books or rewrite our oral history, basically. If anybody can um, correct me on that, I'm happy to bow down. If anyone can find any merit in any of these corridor debt, um, these Pākehā are talking here I will back down my kōrero but um, basically all I see is bullshit and all of these academic fucking papers it would seem that only the dumbest people get any funding for any of this stuff and I've looked through a couple of these um, not of Peter Cleave or Paul Moon but, but actually Māori um, uh, authors of particular papers here and it was full of spelling mistakes I was like how did this even get published into academia like what is going on here it's ridiculous anyway move forward as I say it's AUT is the um, is the person who's running the oh you know the, there's governing this um, I'm sure uh, people have reservations on Auckland University of Technology um, I just want to point out its um, historical location on the north shore of Auckland um, next to Hato Petra which is all highly contended land and um, I'm guessing that's also why uh, Awataha Marae was built there um, next to the AUT around the same time um, and it's uh, Awataha is a urban marae, it doesn't hold any tangihana, it doesn't actually have a hapu 
um, connected to it. But unfortunately, because these um, urban marae uh, have kind of sprung about and they've been around for a while, people think they've got mana whenua now, you know, um, which they don't. They've got no blood ties to the land. Um, another uh, one, uh, for a couple of examples of those urban marae are uh, Orake, um, Marae in Bastion Point, and also the, um, I think it's called Aotearoa Marae down in Christchurch, which is the national marae of the, comp of the country, which is a very, very buzzy situation. I don't know why the hell it would be all the way down in Christchurch, but um, hey, uh, we can do another quarter to on that another time. Uh, <coughs> what has been a tohu about Awataha Marae this week as well, and a big reason why I wanted to bring all of this together is because of a young fella that came out talking about his experience with being um, involved in an internship uh, with the Labour Party in 2013. Been going now, now f going on now five years. This um, I'm very, s and I'm and I'm wondering why this young fella from America decided to come out five years uh, now. Um, now that the elections are, are are coming up, so you know, I see national will get in this time, and it will be all because of weird shit like this. Um, now, why do I make this point? And it comes right back to Shane Jones and his connection with the Labour Party and Te Kahoroa, AUT and this whole fucking UN think tank whānau. Because it's the UN think tank which is trying to push us towards a republic. It's the UN think tank which is creating all of these fractions fractions within our movements because we are heading towards a republic and it's a matter of whose hands do we want this republic to be in the elite or the public so um, I implore all of you in the country to really start talking about this really start talking about the um, legal ramifications of this and how all of our protections will be gone when we'll open the door for the government to basically sell our assets left, right and centre because here's the crux to it the public assets that we once owned all of that land was confiscated or given that land can be given back to the Māori it, the, the governments had no right to sell our public assets they had no right because, as I say, those lands were confiscated and they were also gifted. That's included, that those are all the dams that power us. Those are all the, um, all the railways that originally built this country and all the power stations and that today that feed from, um, from gas. That's why they need to remove the Treaty of Waitangi. That's why they need to remove our protections and move us into a republic so that we've got no shit show in hell in getting our, our, our public infrastructures back. And they'll go offshore and they'll stay in China's hands or wherever uh, until the end of time. And we'll be at the beck and call of these elite countries so basically that comes to the end of my quarter or today um, I hope it uh, shows one some clarity on how I work no I'm not a liberal and hello first time chat chair I'm, I'm liking um, twitch already that these people come from um, from nowhere um, and it's going to be exciting I think to start seeing some of these Americans in that coming online and um, and that we can share our corridor here from um, New Zealand 
to the rest of the world because it's pertinent. We matter very much so on the world stage. And that's why Jacinda was um, over at Blackrock just before the Vatican's asking for their money and their souls back. And that's why she's connected with all the universities in America as well. So, um, Nama here to far note. Um, thank you for watching number one, episode number one, Te Kaharoa versus Te Kaharoa, the entity. And um, too much. Thank you very much. Huckleberry Hive TV.